Welcome to our sensor replacement of our FD-4A. It's our FD-4A, just check on the back. Model is FD-4A now. We are doing a sensor replacement and you could see on the table, I have different variants of our four series sensors. These units take this type of sensor. You can see it at the bottom. We have gold electrodes, depending on the gas sensor, it may be three electrodes. The oxygen type are two electrodes, so don't let that throw you off. Now, if you do purchase a sensor and you plan to replace it yourself, it can come in a unpackaged format like this. It can come unpackaged with a spring connector like that. It can come in a hermetically sealed package like this. Depending on the sensor, they come in different formats. So again, do not let that throw you off or let that confuse you, okay, folks? Now, the only thing to think about is if it does come with a spring, simply take it off and leave it in fresh air for 24 hours. If it does come in a hermetically sealed package, take it out, unpackage it, take it out, take the spring off, and let it sit for 24 hours. Why, Dr. Cos, must it sit? I wanna replace it now. No, please wait. Let it sit so we can acclimatize to your ambient environment, humidity and temperature. Let the electrons stabilize within the sensor and then it will be ready to be replaced in your detector, folks. Again, this is a detector and these are the sensor components that go in the detector. Okay, folks, I hope that is clear. Now, let's move forward and replace the 4A sensor. You may replace it because the sensor has aged it's unstable or it simply failed. You can determine that or you could call us or email us and we could figure out what's going on and we may recommend a sensor replacement. Now, to begin your sensor replacement, make sure you have a Phillips cross screwdriver and you just pop off the screws on the back. One, two, three, four, five, six in the case of our FD-4 eight. Just go forward, folks. Okay, once you've unscrewed them, slowly, take off the back cover just make sure they're all unscrewed look i've missed one not a problem take that off and then slowly unfold this beautiful gas detector and place it down on the table now check it out folks look before we move on i'll explain what you're looking at on the back side we have our lithium polymer battery on the front over here we have our main motherboard. Now, to make it easy, you can simply unplug that so it's separated and it makes working on your, on your detector much easier. And over here, we have our secondary motherboard with our gas sensors. Now, you, you have C4 screws, one, two, three, four, they have to come off for gas sensor replacement. So we could do that right now. Bang, bang. Make sure you don't lose those little screws because they do get a little mischievous. Okay, once that's done, with one finger, hold down the main motherboard while you're pulling the sensor motherboard. Very, very slowly, folks, and then unravel the sensor board just like that, folks. You see that? Now, I would like to mention before we move on that you see those black O-rings. They may be attached to the sensor. Keep those inside. Likewise, there is a stainless steel mesh that helps prevent any large particles contaminating the sensors. Make sure they are also in place. So if they come out or if they fumble out, not a problem, just put them back in sequence. Okay, folks, now again, the sensor PCB is connected to the main PCB with a pin connector. You see that folks right there, the pin connector. Make sure you do not damage them, okay? That's why we're gonna pull straight up and you're gonna continue replacing the sensor. Now, here is the sensor PCB. This is a four gas, four gas sensor, FD-4A, and I'll explain the sensors. Here we have our catalytic combustible sensor. This is not replaceable. I repeat, this is not a replaceable sensor on this board. It's soldered directly on. 
The electrochemical sensors, the four series are here, one, two, three, they are replaceable. Now, here you could see we have an oxygen sensor. Here we have our hydrogen sulfide sensor, H2S, and over here we have our CO sensor, carbon monoxide. Now, every sensor you work with will be named either in text what the gas is or its chemical formula. So make sure you know both. Oxygen is O2, hydrogen sulfide is H2S, and carbon monoxide is CO. Now, once let's assume we want to uh, replace our carbon monoxide detector. Grab your index and thumb, start wiggling, and pull it out, folks. It's as simple as that. Now, once you've pulled it out and it's ready to replace, I highly recommend to visually look carefully at the electrodes. There could be some corrosion. There could be some gunk. What you want to do, if there is some gunk, you want to just get a cloth with some alcohol, place it like so, dab it, and start wiping, folks. You wanna start wiping, and you wanna make sure your electrodes, both on the sensor and on the PCB, are clean and ready to be replaced. Folks, it's quite straightforward. And then you get your sensor again, you hold it with your index and thumb, and again, you can't make a mistake because it's polarized. In other words, the electrodes the configuration is asymmetric. It's gonna only go in one way. You will not make a mistake, so have the confidence, folks. And then bang, you have replaced the sensor, you've cleaned the PCB and electrodes, and now it's ready to be placed back. So again, slowly make sure we have the main PCB, make sure our rings are there, our grills are there, it's all ready to go, and slowly just place it in like so, and the pin should line up, and with your thumbs, press it down, folks, and that's it. It's nice, it's rigid, and it's good to go. If anything is loose, start all over again. Then get your screws and screwdriver, and please screw them back in. Bang. 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 And we've got the last one. He's hiding. There's always a mischievous screw somewhere. And we have our last little baby going in right now. Bang. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Now, we're nearly there. Last but not least is to connect our power battery and then place the backside onto the front cover nicely and we start screwing. Let's go. Look, folks, now, we're all done. Very straightforward. Now, you will not turn on the unit. Now, don't get excited. You, again, must leave it for 24 hours. The sensor is on the PCB. It's placed within it, and it has to, again, stabilize. It has to, again, stabilize in this environment. So leave it for 24 hours, come back the next day, turn it on, and then you must, you must calibrate the sensor that you replaced. We have separate videos on calibrating the FD-4A. Please see those and you will know how to calibrate the respective sensor that you replace, folks. Now, till then, again, be well, be safe and see you soon.